So our LEGO table project starts off simple with two Trofast storage cabinets from IKEA. Now if I had the necessary tools in my shop, I could probably build a cabinet like this without too much effort. It's a pretty basic design and uh, wouldn't be too difficult to put one together. But since I don't, uh, I went to IKEA and got this uh, high quality, uh, nice widely available cabinet system that comes with plastic bins and works great for toy storage, or in our case, Lego storage. Now since these two cabinets would be sitting up against each other, I didn't want the bins on one side to push out the bins on the opposite side, so I figured we needed some kind of stopper in the middle to keep that from happening. Next, I took each stopper and with a little bit of wood glue, I glued each one into the end of each drawer slide on one side of one of the cabinets. Ended up being 18 stoppers in all. And they work great. To prepare for bolting these cabinets together, I removed and just double checked the length of these screws to make sure I didn't hit them with bolts. Then based on those measurements, I made a simple drilling template on paper so I could consistently lay out all the bolt holes that I would need. Using the paper template and an awl, I was able to lay out and drill four holes in each cabinet. You'll notice on this one, it's on the same side as all of the stop blocks that we just glued in. So just mark the hole, come back with a drill, and clear that one out. Then do the same thing in the other three corners. Then switch cabinets. And four more holes. Now with four strategically placed bolt holes in each cabinet, bolting the units together isn't too difficult. In my case, I used 5 16 bolts washers and nylon lock nuts to assemble the two units into one. And those bolts are pretty well hidden out of sight. It was at this point that I found out I built a pretty awesome tunnel. Next stop was out to the garage to build a custom top for this table. Earlier I had measured up the final length and width of the two assembled cabinets and then added 5 eighths of an inch to the overall width and length. And that's the size of the MDF that we'll be cutting out for the table top. I used this half inch thick sheet of MDF mainly because it had a nice smooth finish which would work well for painting and bonus it was pretty cheap only about $13 for a four foot square and just cut it down to size on the table saw. Now for the edging around the tabletop I wanted to recreate that nice natural pine look of the rest of the cabinet. So I took these high quality half inch by inch and a half pine boards and cut a dado slot down the center, quarter inch deep, half an inch wide, and then just cleared out any excess wood with a chisel. And then went back to the table saw to cut a small 45 degree chamfer on each edge just to match the style of the rest of the cabinet. To paint the tabletop we used a combination paint and primer in one that had a pretty high durability and gave it a couple of coats. This is a perfect opportunity to get your kids involved because painting is fairly easy and it doesn't have to be perfect. I wanted the sides of the table to have just a slight shine to them to match the look of the rest of the cabinet and it just make it look nice. So I set them up on these makeshift cardboard sawhorses and just gave a light coat of polyurethane to uh, get that look before I cut them up into smaller pieces. 
Once everything was dry, it was back to the table saw to cut down each piece for the sides. First I rough cut them, a little bit larger than they needed to be. Sized them up on the tabletop. Got them close. This one's a little bit long. And just shaved each one down a little bit until they fit. I'd recommend starting with the long side first, so if you cut them down too short, you can at least turn them into the short side if you need to. The final assembly process basically came down to a bunch of liberally applied wood glue and pipe clamps. I decided not to put any nails or screws in from the outside, mostly for aesthetics, and the glue seemed to hold up well enough. If you really wanted to make this thing strong, maybe some pocket holes and screws from the bottom would work. I use clamps to align each corner, wiped up any excess glue from the top, and then flip the whole works over, knocked it down a little bit to make sure the painted surface would look flush with the dado slots, and then added some glue on the back side just for extra strength. Once all the glue was dry, I just set it on top of our cabinets and it fit great with just a little bit of clearance as designed. Loaded up with Legos. For as simple as this project was, I'm really happy with how it turned out. It looks great, looks clean, and best of all, the entire family has been enjoying it. Now I'm sure there's plenty of things I could do to improve upon the design or even my own techniques, so if you've got any advice or ideas, please let me know. Now it's time to go build something. Thanks for watching.